Welcome to part one of colligative properties. Certain properties change depending on how much solute is present in the solution. We call these properties colligative properties. Colligative properties are properties that depend on the concentration of particles and not the type of particles. So for these properties, the only thing that matters is the amount of stuff that's dissolved in them. It doesn't matter what kinds of substances are dissolved, only how much of it's dissolved. The first colligative property we're going to look at is called freezing point depression. So if we have some substance, got a bunch of particles floating around, we know that as it freezes, something happens to the arrangement of particles. And what we see is that in a solid object, the particles that in a liquid may have been floating around randomly are now going to be very orderly and arranged. This orderly, regular arrangement of particles is characteristic of a solid. And the molecules arranging themselves into this formation is part of the freezing process. So now what is this freezing point depression? Well, a certain temperature needs to be reached for freezing to happen. The temperature has to be low enough. If you instead dissolve particles into the mixture, they interfere with the formation of this orderly structure. And what happens is that the solvent's freezing temperature becomes lowered. It actually requires a colder temperature to freeze this substance if solute particles have been dissolved in it. So if this was water, it would normally freeze at zero degrees Celsius. But if we dissolve something in the water, the freezing temperature or the freezing point of water is lowered. We call that freezing point depression. So in this case, depression means lowering. This property, freezing point depression, explains why we put salt or sand on roads to prevent icing. So any water that would normally freeze on the roads and become dangerous ice at zero degrees Celsius, if it instead has that sand or salt dissolved in it, has a new lower freezing temperature, meaning it actually requires it to be colder than zero degrees for it to freeze and become ice. And that's how we prevent the ice from forming. The second colligative property we're going to look at is essentially the opposite of freezing point depression. It's called boiling point elevation. So where depression meant lowering, elevation means it's going to go up. So as more solute is added, the boiling point goes up. So we add solute, and the boiling point, or the boiling temperature, increases. It gets higher. We see this property utilized in cooking. If you need to cook pasta in boiling water, you can cook it faster by adding salt to the water. Now, how does that work? Normally, boiling water is 100 degrees Celsius, because at that temperature, it becomes steam and escapes the pot entirely. So the water in the boiling pot can only get to 100 degrees Celsius. That's the highest temperature it can reach. But if we put salt in it, we dissolve salt in that water, we have increased the boiling point because okay, that is solute that's been added. So now the water is going to boil at a temperature higher than 100 degrees. So by increasing the temperature at which the water starts to boil, you allow the water in the pot to actually become hotter than 100 degrees Celsius. And if the water is hotter than 100 degrees Celsius, it will cook the pasta even faster. Now we've said that adding solute has these effects, for these colligative properties. Adding the salt will lower the freezing point or increase the boiling point. And because these are colligative properties, the degree to which the freezing point is lowered, or the degree to which the boiling point is elevated, is entirely dependent on concentration, or how much solute is added. So let's take a look at what happens when we add different solutes to water. And specifically, we're going to be looking at the effect of concentration. So we have several substances here under the solute added, and the solute added is going to be added to water. So we're dissolving these in water. And we know that water's normal freezing point, so it's going to freeze at zero degrees Celsius. That's the normal freezing point. So let's see what happens to the freezing point when I add one mole of sugar compared to one mole of sodium chloride compared to one mole of calcium chloride. And we can start to see the effect of concentration on this particular colligative property this freezing point depression that we're looking at. So, normally it's zero degrees Celsius. 
if we put one mole of sugar and we dissolve that into the water, we're going to get a new freezing point of negative 1.86 degrees Celsius. So that fits with our expectations. We added solute and the freezing point went down. Now our definition of a colligative property is something that depends only on the concentration of particles, not on the type of particles. So we should expect to see the same change in freezing point temperature regardless of what the substance is. This shouldn't matter. This shouldn't matter. The only thing that should matter is that we have one mole being added. But we're going to see that that's not the case. If I add one mole of NaCl, I end up with a new freezing point of negative 3.72 degrees Celsius. And if I add one mole of calcium chloride, I end up with negative 5.78 degrees Celsius. So now there's something going on here that we're not realizing. This should not be happening because we just said that a colligative property that the types don't matter. But clearly there's something different between those substances because they're all one mole. The key to understanding what's happening here is that it depends on the concentration of particles. So one mole of sugar results in one mole of particles. But NaCl, sodium chloride, when dissolved in water, it's an ionic compound and it dissociates completely. So in solution, this becomes equal amounts of Na plus and Cl minus. And one mole of NaCl will give me one mole of this and one mole of this. So I actually have two moles of solute here. And that's why I have a lower, an even lower freezing point. Now the calcium chloride, something similar is happening. This is also ionic. It also is going to dissociate. I'm going to have a calcium 2 plus ion. And I'm also going to have two Cl minus ions. So the NaCl had two total particles released. The CaCl2, every single molecule of calcium chloride is going to release one, two, three total particles. So this is one particle essentially. This is two particles. And this is three particles. And that's why we see an increasing effect on the lowering of the freezing point. One particle has less of an effect than three particles would have. And to be more specific, the two particles of sodium chloride have twice the effect, negative 1.86 to negative 3.72. So it's twice the effect of one. Three particles has three times the effect of just one particle. So there's a direct relationship between the amount of solute added and the degree to which the freezing point is lowered. If we looked at the boiling point changes for these, we would see the same pattern that the NaCl would have twice the effect of the sugar and the calcium chloride having three times the effect of the sugar. In the next part, we're going to further explore the mathematical relationship we're starting to see in this chart. We're also going to take a look at a third colligative property and also how to use molality to determine the extent of freezing point depression and boiling point elevation.